up, and uh, we've all sinned, and we've all come short of the glory of God, which we'll talk about uh, today, and, uh, and, and the character of humanity is totally depraved. Then we talked about the undertow of depravity, of depraved actions, and the undertow, and sin pulls us down, you know, and it destroys, and it kills, and it maims. Uh, a lot of times we don't realize we hurt, but, you know, we do. A lot of times our actions hurt people. Uh, sin pulls us down, down to the pit of hell. Humanity has a depraved tongue, you know, and we get angry. And sometimes our tongue, our mouth, how many times our mouth shoot off before our brain kicks in? Yeah, yeah that, that's me, you know. And, uh, and I was like that at work, and, and at LifeWay, even at LifeWay and everything, when they took Christ out of their, um, their new mission statement and everything, I had a problem with that. And then when the big boss comes in, George hated it when the big boss came in because he had tried keeping me and the big boss separated. <laughs> because, I mean, and, and I told him, I said, why are you taking Christ out? And, and the reason they give and everything is because the higher up couldn't remember the whole, the whole mission statement, so they kind of shortened it for people to remember. You know? And, but we take Christ out, and you just say God. I mean, God can be anything. You know, God is universal. God is, I mean, um, you say God to a um, Muslim, they're thinking in their brain, who? Allah. You're saying God, they're thinking Allah. Right? Uh, and if you do it with a tree hugger, you say God, and they say big tree. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so when you take that out, when you take Christ out, you can say God all day long, nobody gets offended. But when you say Jesus Christ, Amen. people get offended. But Jesus said that the world hated me before it hated you. Right. You know, and so um, in, 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 in being a Christian organization, you take Christ out, you've lost everything. Right. You know, we start looking at the money instead of uh, what the, the whole thing is that we're there for a mission. You know, mission, 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 mission. Reaching the lost for Christ. And uh, in our tongue gets us in trouble. Um, our, even our actions get us in trouble. And uh, a lot of times, how many can see, and this is my problem, that I can see when, when you know, I can tell by the actions of people, their facial expressions, um, the way they walk, the way they, you know, bring themselves. And you can tell that they're upset. How many can do that? You know, and, and you look at, you know, you're talking to somebody, and you see that facial expression, and you know that, well, either something you said disagreed with them, or they have a thought, or or something. But um, but our actions also get us in trouble because we're, of course, we're depraved creatures. And the and the the, the, the last uh, the other point I had was the bills of depravity, which is verses 19 and 20 of three. All the world may become guilty before God. And this was Paul's whole thing. With, you know, with this was showing that not just I mean the Jews, the Gentiles were all guilty. The Jews thought that they had it made. I remember I told you before that they even believed that Abraham stood down there by the pit of hell, make sure that no son of his was going in. So that they you know, and so they believed that they were all safe from going to hell because they were a Jew. They were born a Jew. They were a Jew. And a lot of times people believe that. Well, I've been to church. I go to church. My parents drug me to church every Sunday. I sit in church, and I'm a Christian. I'm good to go. And it's not. It's a heart issue. It's not where you sit. And uh, and so it's a heart issue. So what you're saying, both Jews and Gentiles have sinned before God. Both Jews and Gentiles stand guilty before God. We all are guilty. And then my last point was that Jesus is the only one who can save us from the sin tree. Remember my title was Up Sin Creek Loud Hell. And, um, and, and, and so the only one that can save us from sin creed is, is Christ. And, uh, and God came to this earth, uh, you know, and uh, God was us Emmanuel, and to die for us. You know, and to give himself, to pay the penalty that none of us can pay. You know, none of us can pay that penalty. Uh, uh, and so Christ came and died. And so now we're coming to verses 21 to 31. Now let's take a look at them verses. It says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. 
even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all, but you all say that, for all, they all, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins and and are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? By of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing is of it, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So, the, the first point I want to talk about, and the thing is that uh, in today's society, we lose track of reality. We have so much. The kids are on, on uh, Xboxes and Playstations and, um, and all that and, uh, and, and all this killing going on and stuff. I mean, look at these games that they have out there and blowing people away. And, 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 and it, but it's all uh, fake and, and not real, but they believe it's real, you know. And they go out and, and perform the game. How many of you have seen that on the news and stuff? People getting killed. And what was that one that they had before we... You go up and smack somebody in the head and run or something like that. There was a smacking one. Or, uh, they hit the, the elbow mainly. That wasn't a game. That was really happening. I know it was happening, but it was based on a game, I thought. It was smacking one or something. And some people got, and some of the elderly got killed because of, of it. And uh, shooting. And um, how about, how many of you heard of the game Grand Theft? Awesome. What what is that teaching the kids on there? You get points for running over somebody, right? Picking up a woman of the evening, uh, all this kind of stuff. And, and, and kids are, get so involved in the game, they lose track of time, they lose track of reality, and there's so much. And and excuse me there for a minute. Start getting top mouth. Um, but they lose track of reality, and we lose track of what we know sin. And so what we're talking about right now is the reality of sin. You know what? It, you know the reality of sin. We see the sin is missing the mark um, uh, of God's standards. Okay, and, and and the reality of sin is that everybody is infected. We all have a terminal disease. We all have a terminal illness. I was talking to a gentleman yesterday over at Lowe's while my son Nelson was running around. I have the habit of that stopping and chasing. I was talking to one of the boys and everything, and I said, You look familiar. He looked at me and he says, uh, Well, bring it to my recollection. And I said, I don't know. I just said, You look familiar. <laughs> and we got talking, and, and I said, Well, did you go to Rustburg? And, and, uh, and he said, yeah, but he, I think he graduated, in, in the, he's like 40 years old. And I thought he knew somebody else that when we were in there before. But anyways, and, and I said, you know, I said, well, I'm 53. And I said that, uh, you know, I used to be you, and one day you're going to be me. <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and we don't realize this. You know, our kids don't realize this, that, you know, and they're so young. And, and then how many of you see um, some of the younger kids just kind of the elder? You know, and making fun of them, and, and looking at what the government is doing with some of the elderly and Social Security and, and all this, and they don't realize, hey, the decisions they make now up there in the head office is going to affect them later because they're going to be where these people are now. They don't realize that. And so we have the reality of sins that affects everybody. We're born into it. You know, a 
a two-year-old child is a pure example of sin. They run, I mean, they run everything their way. And they want it now. And they don't get it, they pitch a fit. They cry, they scream. How many adults are like that? <laughs> you worked in the customer service and everything. You see a lot of people. I told you a story before, years ago when I went to Walmart, a guy came in there and he bought clams. He ate the whole box. Or it came in the container. And he comes back and he says they were bad. Now, why would you eat the whole thing if they were bad? <laughs> then he comes back and wants a refund for something he ate. All of it. Then he wants an extra five dollars for his time and his effort. And he pitched a fit. And finally the big hat shows and everything came to him just to shut him up. They gave it to him. I said, you have a hardware department full of duct tape. Go get some. <laughs> I was trying to pick up some duct tape yesterday when I was going with Nelson. I said, oh, Nelson, you got to get my main tool for a toolbox. Duct tape. <laughs> but we lose track of the reality of something that everybody's affected. It affects our disposition. It affects the way we act. Um, you know, um, sin invades our attitudes and our thoughts, and uh, and, and we, we we can really pitch a fit. And uh, and as our deeds, uh, sin performs rebellion towards God and acts of injury and, uh, towards others. I want to see a great movie this week, and I suggest that you, uh, especially you um, newlyweds or you uh, soon to be married or soon or whatever, uh, dating or husband and wife or. Go on a date, but a movie is great. It's called The Case for Christ. Great apologetic movie, and it's based on Lee Strobel's life. He was an atheist, a strong atheist. His wife got saved, and she, and she didn't really say much to him about it, but he saw the change in her life. And he did a, uh, a he was a journalist. He wrote for a newspaper. And he did actually kind of like a CSI investigation, a journalist investigation, to prove that Christ did not exist. But guess what? He failed. He, he, he realized, and then he got saved. But it's an awesome movie to go to. And, um, and, and because, you know, our rebellion, you know, as a child, I mean, our rebellion is against God. Our rebellion is against, how many, um, how many of us as teenagers rebelled against our parents? I, I'm, I'm guilty. We want to do things our way. We're old enough to do what we want to do. We shouldn't have no curfew to come home at 11 o'clock. That's for little kids. I know more than you do, Mom, Dad. And uh, we rebel against our parents. We rebel against our... Uh, uh, we, and especially we rebel against God. And, uh, and so... It, Sin affects our, our disposition, it affects our deeds, and then we, we become slaves to sin. You know, sin is our driving force. We want all the pleasures of the world that the world can offer. But not realizing on the other side, I mean, all this pleasure you see out here, it's really a mirage. Because on the other side is a pit. On the other side is a pit. I know family members, they, I mean, they just love going to wine festivals. They just love going and, 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 and drinking up. And drinking and drinking and drinking. I've been there. I've done that. Until God woke me up. I mean, I was a, I mean, I was a, I wasn't a mean drunk. I was a, a goofy drunk. I was kind of like the Rodney Dangerfield on steroids. <laughs> well, you know what Jesus said in, in in John 8, 34, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And all the pleasures of the world, it drives us to do these things. It drives us, we want these pleasures, we want the fun out of life, we want, and, and God wants us to have fun and everything too, but to what extent? He wants us to put Him first. 
You know, worship Him. Praise Him. You know, He is the Creator of all. And then what happens with sin? So we have the reality of sin, and you know it affects all of us, and affects our all being, our, and our body, and everything else. We get old, and in that movie, I was going to tell you too, in that movie, how many of you ever heard of the actress named Faye Dunaway? Raise your hand. Yeah. Faye Dunaway. She's in the movie. Almost didn't recognize her. She had those implants in her lips. What do you call those? Uh, you know, Botox. Botox. They were injections. Is that like when they take fat from your backside? I was always afraid to do that or anything because then I figured if I get done talking, my mouth would get tired and I want to sit down. But she had the Botox injection and she almost looked like Daffy Duck. I mean, it was like. <laughs> Even when she talked, I said, "You gotta be kidding me!" But this is vanity. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at look at um, you know, Kenny Rogers. You all know Kenny Rogers. I mean, he's had his face lifted so many times when he blinks his eyes, he pulls up the socks. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, his face is so pulled back and everything, he almost looks Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 it's all vanity because we're going to get old. Can't stop it. No matter how many times, but the more stuff you do to your face and everything, when we get old, I mean, look at the tattoos people put on their body. They put a cute little butterfly. But when you're getting old, it's going to turn into an ugly mother. <laughs> it's going to sink. Put a nice big old ship there, and the time you get old, it looks like the Titanic. <laughs> sink it. But we get the, 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 um, Vanity. You know, that is part of our sinful nature. We, we don't want to get old, especially the movie stars and stuff. We want to stay young forever. No, nobody's found the problem of youth yet, have they? Nobody has. And, and so, then we, the result of sin, sin distorts our relationship with others. Sin hurts. Our attitudes cause strife, tension. We end up judging people. You know, that's what the Pharisees did. We're talking about that in Sunday school today. The Pharisees, you know, they constricted everybody to the law, to the law, to the law. But they lost off about the mercy of the law. The love of the law. You know, and, and, and Christ came and everything. And he showed love and compassion. <coughs> he went to the sinners. He went to the adulterers. He went to the ones that are hurting. That are confused. They think this is all what life has to offer them. He came and showed us much, much more. God wants the best for your life, not the worst. And He came. But sin distorts our relationship with other people. Sin defiles our relationship with God. You know, when Adam and Eve first sinned, it drove a wedge between God and man. Because of man's sin. What did man do when he sinned? And, and, and God came looking for him. What was he doing? He was hiding. Why? Because he was naked. He realized, hey, a little trap in here. <laughs> <laughs> and they went and hid, and God was looking for him. God searched them out and was looking for him. And, and God, and, and it drove that wedge between them because of sin. And but Christ came to bridge the gap. Between God and man. And, and, and so, and sin, when it, it's finished, brings forth death. Death. And we see here where it says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all upon them that believe. Uh, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short. Of the glory of God. You all come short of that glory. James 1 14 15 says, But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when the, a lust hath conceived it, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth what? Death. Death. David, a man from God's own heart, had an idle mind one day. Wait, and his, his armies were out there fighting, I think. He was back at the castle, just moping around, looking around. 
There he saw Bathsheba in the box, taking a bath. And he wanted her. He was king. He didn't have anything he wanted, right? Send for her. He knew that she, that was Uriah's wife. He had all these other wives, too. And he wanted something that wasn't his. Because of his lust. Because of the lust. We want things, too. That's why people steal. Because we want things that we can't have. My wife hides our money for I can't go to life for it. <laughs> she gives me enough money to make it. And I got over that wall the other day with uh, Brother John there. And I had exactly $35. And that's exactly what I spent was $35. <laughs> Walt was even generous and merciful. And let me get away with a little bit, you know. With my military discount. <laughs> but, but you know, and even when I was up in New York, she gave me a stipend. Because she knew if she gives me $200, I'm going to come back with $200 of the books. <laughs> I thought that was a privilege. <laughs> I, hope, I gave her a stroke of coming back from life with the other day after we didn't see the movie. I had a big old box. And it, you know, it, was, it was given to me by life because somebody had don't, uh, got rid of a whole bunch of Bibles and stuff and I brought them over put them in the, the church. But I brought them home and everything. She saw me coming in with this big old box. Her eyes got about as big as quarters. And I said, well, I used the card, dear. You're a what? <laughs> and, uh, but, no. Uh, anyway, she, um, I told her what it was and um, I saved my life, so. <laughs> Um, but because of our lust, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. You know, for the wages of sin is what? Death. Okay, our bodies are going to die because they're sinful. You know, Christ came to save us, and, and, and we receive him as Lord in our sin. We repent of our sin, we trust in him, and we receive him, and we have eternal life in Christ Jesus. This body is still going to die, but guess what? We're going to be in heaven. Absent from the body is what? Present with the Lord. And one day our body is going to be raised up and meet our spirit in the air. We're going to have a glorified body like Christ has. And uh, I can't wait for that day. But we all have a terminal condition. You know, we all uh, um, have been battling it for years. It is a malignancy deep down in our souls and our flesh is affected and it will soon die. Our parents pass it on and we pass it on to our children and our grandchildren and it's called sin. Sin. You wonder why your children do the things that they do? It's because sin. We need to teach our children. We need to be spend time with our children. We need to teach them right from wrong. We need to show them God's ways. You know, and because you're not raising children, you're raising young adults. Even as a child, you're raising them to be an adult. To make decisions on their own, to make good decisions on their own. And never let them be afraid to come to you when they make mistakes. Because we've all made mistakes, haven't we? And what, we, what us parents try to do when is teaching our kids not to make the same mistakes that we did. But guess what? They turn around and do the same thing. Because they don't, they don't think that mom and dad made mistakes. But man is helpless to save himself. No matter what we can do, we can't get to heaven on our own. Psalm 49, 6 and 8 says, They that trust in their wealth and both themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can be by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceases forever. Okay? And so we can't save ourselves. Only God can do that. And that's where we're And then Psalm 51, 5 says, Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You know, we are born into sin. You know, and we make bad decisions because of our sinful nature. And guess what, though? Jesus, you know, we have the terminal condition. And speaking of, we have the Relay for Life thing on next Saturday, and maybe we have the Relay for Life. But I want to bounce off of that and say, well, you know, Jesus Relay for our life. Because of our terminal condition, Jesus relayed for our life. You know, he went down to Via Della Rosa. He took the, the beatings and the punishment and everything that we rightly deserve upon himself to save us. Because that's where it says here, let's go down to 
um, uh, 24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What is justified? Justified. You are justified. It means just as you have not sinned. Okay? You are have a clean slate because of Christ. <laughs> justified. We are found not guilty because of Christ. He took the pen penalty. He was found guilty. And um, just think. How many have been in the courtroom? Courtroom. Well, it really frisky down here in Campbell County. Boy, you gotta go and do that. You know? I got belt buckle and everything that I wear. Every time I go through that stupid thing, bee, 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 and here I stand. <laughs> We've been in a courtroom. Maybe. Now, just picture, okay? You have you have in the courtroom. You have the the um, the one that's being convicted, right? You have his lawyer. And if it's a court appointed lawyer, you might as well have Daffy Duck. Yeah. Um, then you have on the other side, you have the um, prosecuting attorney and all those. Okay? Now just think, if the judge, okay, that, I, I, the court was all the way over and then they found you guilty. Guilty. Gavel went down. He said, I'm going to sentence you to death. But then the judge stands up. And walks out and says, I am going to take this punch. They never have to count the way. Anyway. No. But that's what God did for us. We're found guilty before God, but Christ took our punishment. And you know, and you know, we were born, and God created us in his image. And we are wonderfully made. He knit us together. And, I mean, if you ever see a miracle, people say, well, I've never seen a miracle. If, you, you, if you've seen a baby, you've seen a miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, being formed in a mother's womb. You see those little ultrasounds. And, and, and just, it's just so precious. But that's life. That conception is life. Being formed. And, and I want to read you a thing here. Um... How many of you uh, heard of Winston Churchill? He was the uh, Prime Minister over in England during World War II. It says, a wealthy English family once invited a friend to spend time at their beautiful estate. The happy gathering was almost plunged into a terrible tragedy on the first day when the children went swimming. One of them got into the deep water and was drowning. Fortunately, a gardener heard the others screaming and plunged into the pool to rescue the helpless victim. That youngster was Winston Churchill. His parents, deeply gratefully, grateful to the gardener, asked what they could do to reward him. He hesitated, then he said, I wish my son could go to college someday and become a doctor. We'll pay his way, replied Churchill's parents. Years later, when Sir Winston Churchill was Prime Minister of England, he was stricken with pneumonia. Greatly concerned, the king summoned the best physician who could be found to the bedside of the ailing leader. The doctor was Sir Alexander Fleming, the developer of penicillin. He was also the son of the gardener who had saved Winston from drowning as a boy. Later, Churchill said, rarely has one man owed his life twice to the same person. We owe our life twice. About our life and birth and our spiritual life. And uh, there's another one too I thought was really cute. It's called The Lost Boat. Uh, it says Tom carried his new boat to the edge of the river. He carefully placed it on the water and slowly let out the string. How smoothly the boat sailed. Tom sat in the warm sunshine admiring the little boat and he had built, and suddenly a strong current uh, took the boat. Tom tried to pull it back to shore, but the straw of the string broke, and the little boat raced downstream. Tom ran it, uh, along the sand, sandy shore as fast as he could, but his little boat soon slipped out of sight. 
All afternoon, he searched for the boat. Finally, when it was too dark to look any longer, Tom sadly went home. A few days later, on the way home from school, Tom spotted the boat, just like his, in a store window. When he got closer, he could see, sure enough, it was him. He found his boat. But it's in a store window. Tom hurried to the store manager, sir, that's my boat in your window. I made it. Sorry, son, but someone else brought it in this morning. If you want it, they'll have to buy it for one dollar. Tom ran home and counted all his money, exactly one dollar. When he reached the store, he rushed to the counter. Here's the money for my boat. As he left the store, Tom hugged his boat and he said, Now you are twice mine. First, I made you. And now, I bought you. We are twice God. He made us. And then he bought us. He bought us by his precious blood. He made us in our mother's womb. He put us together, formed us, but because of our sinful nature, because of our waywardness and our rebellion towards him, he came down and he died for us. And we are bought at a price. Yes. Um, and that's what um, being redemption, or redemption is, being redeemed. You are bought out of slavery. You're bought out of slavery of sin. You're bought at a price. And um, <clears throat> jump ahead of myself here. <clears throat> Sorry for that. Um, so the remedy is received freely because of Jesus' atoning sacrifice. First Peter 2, 24, 25 says, Who is his own self bear our sins in his own body? On the tree that we breathe, being dead to our sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. For we were as sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our soul. <coughs> and justification. The Greek word is dikahayu. Just as I have never sinned. The judge takes the sentence for his confidence. Just as we have never sinned. You know, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And um, and then um, 1 Peter, uh, I'll do that one. And this remedy, and anyway, as we said, see here, it also says here that, um, that where is the boasting then? Because we can't boast about our own salvation. We can't boast and say, we did it. And the, you know what the song is that they sing in hell? How many know what that song is? I told you before. I did it my way. That's the song that's sung in hell. I did it my way. And we try to do things our way. We want to meet God on our own terms, not on His. That's the problem that I need. They wanted all the glory and all the prestige and everything else that went with it. And Satan twisted the scriptures and lied to them. And because man found. But Jesus, in another garden, says, Not my will, but your will be done. And so we have the righteousness of Christ. I, want, I called a few ladies up and asked them if they had a white robe. But uh, I had no luck. Then I couldn't find my black coat, so I was really out of luck. But I want to point out, you know, and use that illustration as we we are, you know, born in the sin and we are decaying and ugly and, and, and you know, like like darkness and, and coat and uh, black coat on us and, and um, we're like worms. You know, because Jesus or God says in his word what that our righteousness is like what? Filthy rags. God. Our righteousness. And so, when we, you know, we receive Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we surrender all to Him. He cleanses us up, and we are put on the white robe. And, and God sees us through His Son, Jesus Christ. You know, it's His righteousness that is on us, not our own. It's His righteousness. 
And so redemption, it means to be purchased from the, from the slave market of sin. Totally set free. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Alright? And I have one last little, I got one little story, another story here. And it's called Mark Hand Settled the Issue. And um, it says an orphan boy was living with his grandmother when their house caught on fire. The grandmother, trying to get upstairs to rescue the boy, perished in the flames. The boy cries to help. Where were finally answered by a man who climbed an iron drain pipe and came down with the boy hanging tightly to his neck. Several weeks later, a public hearing was held to determine who would receive custody of the child. A farmer, a teacher, and town's wealthiest citizen all gave the reason they felt that he should be chosen to give the boy a home. But as they talked, the lad's eyes remained focused on the floor. Then a stranger walked to the front and slowly took his hands from his pocket, revealing several scars on them. As the crowd gasped, the boy cried out in recognition. This was the man who saved his life. His hands had been burned when he climbed the hot fire. With a leap, the boy threw his arms around the man's neck and held on for dear life. The other men finally walked away, leaving the boy and his rescuer alone. Those marred hands had settled the issue. Christ has marred hands and has settled the issue for us. He is our Savior and He is our Redeemer. You know, and He's the only one that can, that can save us. He is our mediator. And um, <clears throat> Isaiah 61.10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decked himself with ornaments, as a bride adorned herself with her We are cleansed. We are purged. We are made righteous before God because of Jesus we're all sinners. This is not a museum of the saints. This is the museum. This is a hospital of the sick. And why do you go to the hospital? Because you're sick. A lot of us fight going to the hospital, though. We're fighting because when we go there with something, we come back to something else. But, you know, and so, in closing, you know, are you a slave sin? Are you being driven by your sin? Are you spending time with Christ daily? He wants to spend time with you. He wants that coffee hour. How many times do we say, well, I'm too busy? Got things to do. Got to work, 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 work. Who gave you the strength to work? Who gave you the, the brains to work? Who's the man has, has accomplished over all these years? Have you ever seen a dog make a car? Only in Walt Disney. <laughs> you haven't seen any animals accomplish anything. They still do the same old thing they've done for centuries. But man is the only one who can rise up big buildings, build automobiles, and God gave us. He created us in his own image. And in his image, he created them male and female. You know, you know, do you want to get right with God today? He loves you. He cares about you. He wants to hear your hurts, your pains, your sufferings, what you're going through in life. Are you coming to time? Are you going to Bible studies? Are you wanting to know more than you know? I mean, studying the Bible is a lifelong adventure. We only tell him one way thing is when we're in his presence. But all of our, all of our questions will be answered. I don't know everything. Even the doc back there don't know everything. And so, do you want to get right with God today? Christ has paid for your freedom. He bought you. He redeemed you. He paid for you. You are now twice His. He created you. Now He redeemed you. Spend time with Christ. Repent of your sins and give your life to Christ. 
Closing with this verse, Philippians 3, 7 and 9. For what things were gained to me, those I count are lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things, but lost for excellently of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dull, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we, we can learn the, the reality of sin. And Lord, we, we, we see what sin does to us, to our families, and to everybody. We're born uh, into sin. And Lord, that, that you love us so much that you sent your son to die on that cross to free us, to redeem us from the slave, to be a slave to sin. Yes, we're still in this single body, and yes, the body will one day die. But Lord, on our journey of life, let us serve you. Let us make time for you daily in our devotions. Let us pray at the work site. Let us reach people for you, Lord, to speak your name. Let people know, Father, that you are real and that you are here with us, wanting people to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you again for your words today, Father, and thank you for our redemption in you, Father, because now we are twice owned by you, because the mark, the nail pierced hands, those marred hands, that only you. Lord, we thank you. You created us, and you bought us in the heart of us. Let us live for you today. And we pray, Father, someone here that does not know you, that wants a relationship with you, that wants to render all to repent of their sins, to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, to not be driven by their sins anymore, but lust of their flesh, that come today, touch them, Father, Father, bring them to the altar. Let them be broken before you. And let us be broken daily before you, Father. Humble us, Lord, that we may serve you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord.